says you've been live for three seconds. Okay, perfect. And we are live again, uh, coming awesome. out of uh, Palm Springs uh, Field Service USA. Uh, I've got my buddy again, Roy, here. Uh, and I've got uh, Brian and Cliff uh, from uh, Lone Star. Uh, they had uh, an earlier uh, keynote uh, presentation on transforming field services to software. And it's some of the easiest things that you think you could like implement to more and why haven't I done it yet? <laughs> but it's also what's easy to do, it's easy not to do. So uh, Brian Cliff, please introduce yourselves and uh, so we can uh, dig in. Awesome. Uh, my name is Brian Banks. Uh, been with Lone Star Communications now for about 17 years. I started out as a field tech, uh, moved into integrations and then uh, moved into cybersecurity. I was an information security officer for about five years, and then I moved into research and development. And that's the current position I'm holding now. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> My name's Chris Schweitzer. I've been with Lone Star probably about 26 years. I started off, I don't know, in 96. <laughs> I started off when I was young, in my 20s. <laughs> so um, we, I started pulling cable. I was a tech um, out in the field. Then I, I moved into uh, actually engineering moved into sales moved into management innovation they fitting uh nurse call systems rtls systems overhead paging anything that that can improve patient care or um, communications inside of uh, a hospital that's yeah. what i do every day i mean cool. you come from uh, a healthcare background yeah as well. So absolutely. So yeah. So I mean, currently working at a public, um, you know, startup company, public safety um, uh, operating system. But I was in healthcare for twelve years. So the pneumatic tube systems yes. that are near all the nursing stations and yes. all the nursing call centers, uh, Translogic, like that was our. Co I've worked there for twelve years. So um, okay. so very familiar with the nurse call systems and med servers and all of that other stuff from a healthcare perspective. Um, and being a part of the building process, <laughs> reviewing all of the several hundred page general contractor requirements for BIM coordination and everything else so that you're in alignment with where everything needs to go in the building to your point behind the walls the cut sheets how far you got to be from the studs because the tube system has to get cut into the wall right. um and so we normally drop it in before the drywall goes up so uh very familiar with your uh your side of the world as well but it was it was good and it was pretty cool to, to hear your um, discussion earlier as well which we're doing for your technicians yeah so uh 3d uh it's about how can we bring technology that was the uh, a theme, I guess, of uh, for the session is how do we use technology to transform uh, field services? And uh, what really attracted me first and caught my attention is uh, the pain point that you're addressing, and that's decentralized data across the entire organization. It's not something that's not uncommon, uh, right? Data is decentralized in most field service uh, companies. So it's really what uh, caught my attention is how you were able to bring that all together and then derive the insight from it and make it easier uh, for the technicians to get the job done. So I would love to like maybe a quick recap of the case study uh, that you guys uh, presented and then we'll go a little bit deeper there. Okay, well, uh, at our company, we have uh, our a C level, which is uh, an S they call it a SBC committee. Mm -hmm. And that, that committee came together and said, you know, we need to bring together some innovative uh, people within the company and find out what could disrupt us or how could we be a disruption in the industry? And Cliff and I both having the field service background, uh, we both immediately was like, man, we could actually empower our technicians, you know, give them uh, as much information as we can in the field. And that initially was something that I had kind of been working on, but not in this in the form of a of a of a, of a mobile app. Yeah. Um, and so uh, in that conversation. Um, that's when Cliff had uh, came up with the idea of doing it within a mobile app. Mm. And that's where the fun started. So <laughs> it was like, okay, well, where do we keep all our cut sheets? Who has them? How do we get them? Where, where, are, they, where are they centrally stored? How are, how are technicians doing it now? And we, we kind of knew how they were doing it now. Um, but you start realizing internally in your company how much stuff is not centralized <laughs> um like you were talking earlier um about uh drawings yeah you, you start to realize okay well we install these systems but where are the as builts oh as built where where are the drawings on how we <laughs> wire this place and who keeps them up yeah and you'll find that you'll have 
15 different sets of drawings for the same project over time yeah because it'll be project one project two a little add here a little delete here a move here. a change order right yeah. something else yeah. that didn't pop up it was yeah. like oh we thought we could put it there but it wasn't or they ran hvac through here so we had to move it um but yeah as yeah. built service so. calls oh. and somebody added a device and the service team didn't tell the operations team they added a device and so you know it just starts exposing once you start building the app it starts exposing what you thought was centralized is not really centralized, like centralized IT, who works all the server IPs, or who's keeping up with the passwords. You find out it's in somebody's notepad, it's in that one IT person's head, and then slowly over time, we started finding little little lanes where we could actually apply it in the app, yeah. and have small wins. And we're still finding data now. There's still things that have to be fixed above above us to centralize yeah. information. But we could at least get to the wins that would impact the technicians right now. Okay. Yeah. You hear all the stuff he just said. Okay, so I traditionally uh, built mobile apps the traditional way in uh, Xcode, Swift, uh, the Android. Uh, and when, when he started talking about doing this within a mobile app in my mind i'm thinking like there's no way we're going to be able to do all this two guys and all of this information there's just no way we're going to be able to do this in the in in, in a practical time span it's just not going to happen and he and he came to he says hey have you ever uh looked at glide have you ever heard of glide i says no what is that he says it's a it's a it's basically a no code environment that will give you the ability to build mobile apps even when I heard that, I still couldn't wrap my head around being able to do something like that within a no code development. You know, I just saw limitations. And so we started, we jumped on it after work and we started working on it every night after work. And within a week, when I saw what we could produce within a week, I was blown away. I was, man, this is incredible. And so we just started building and adding and, you know, building YouTube videos and just, just constantly going and we took it back to our C level in our DOD group and we said look at what we create what? <laughs> uh -oh. so, so they gave us when they brought us together they gave us the the, the opportunity to give ourselves a name okay <laughs> and it's always dangerous when you right? people name their own group <laughs> right and so we, we we started out with the department of disruption oh that's dangerous <laughs> yeah that's awesome they basically gave us a free ticket to be as disruptive as possible to basically look at things we normally do and say why do we do that yeah just because we've been doing it for 10 years like maybe that process doesn't work maybe we can lean that process out and get rid of four or five steps yeah or try something new um so we kind of we kind of got a free ticket to do that. So when we created the app, we didn't ask if we want approval. We just created it. it. And we didn't have to go through a committee or a board, have people yeah, so, argue so, over a so the, the innovation process, there weren't a lot of friction. And, and, no. And, uh, yeah, and, and so so and so you built a knowledge base, basically, in an app uh, to enable the technician uh, to do what? What's the desired outcome that you're helping your technician Okay, uh, I'm going to kind of set a space for this. It, it, it was one to just get information that Cliff will talk about, you know, with uh, spec sheets and things like that. But also in our industry, it's traditionally it was an analog industry, mm. just wire, wires, you know, and, and, and then it started transitioning to being something that's on a network. Well, a lot of our technicians were not network administrators and did not have any knowledge of how networks work. So there was a space there where they became a little bit apprehensive to working on the system because of this IT side of now nurse call being on the network, so to yeah. speak, right? And and so even just having the manual, there was a bit of fear, right? And so putting this in uh, in in a um, in the form of a YouTube two minute YouTube video um, gave them much more confident of having. Uh, one of our techs who uh, was one of the trainers who did the videos for us gave them that that confidence of actually being able to look up something and and, and solve problems by utilizing those YouTube videos and those how-to step steps that were in the app.
Yeah, and I, I think that's interesting when you talk about that point about, you know, like not knowing where the line is, like from analog to digital, like from a one thing I always had to talk about in healthcare was like there normally your traditional facilities departments were really afraid right. to get into the digital space. And what I realized it was because they don't know the language, right? Like they know how to talk AC voltage, DC, DC voltage, but they don't know how to talk subnet mass, yes. DNS, like they don't know how to talk that. So there was always this reluctance to, to get there. And like you said, it gap like not right. knowing how to talk about like what's going on with the network where is the server where is the switch like what's the difference between the server and the switch <laughs> it's just being able to give them because i was like at my former company i was there during our transition right from rs to you know 252 cable to ethernet and then fiber optics and all of that and you would just you know have a tech been here for 25 years you know, we had a guy we called him the, the comm line whisperer like he could he could find a, a break in a line like 10 feet behind a wall like you didn't know how yeah but it was really a hesitancy and then what we really had to do is we reached out we like what do you all need to know mm -hmm. and so they were like look but like this new computer stuff software stuff the network and stuff we really don't know so we were intentional about all right like let's spend some time and i have a degree in it right so i was like i know what we're doing like let let me give you you know like so we set up our training to do that introduction because it's that language right and so right. to your point like how can you pull that information in put it in a way in a context where it's really easy exactly. for somebody to grab that information because we're asking you to do something new and it's not the work that's as difficult as when i need to have a conversation with the it department yes and now the nurse call's not working because i it. can't troubleshoot it anymore you got right? it i could troubleshoot it when it was a cable i can't troubleshoot it when i don't know if it's communicating what this means, it's blinking, it's not blinking. Yes. Um, and so changing the way that they have to communicate is a, is, a, is a big thing as well. And so so you're saying you went two, three minutes, so you went like micro learning, short YouTube videos, yes. um, and, and that that all that worked for you guys in that in that space or in other areas as well? Well, it, it worked in that space along with other things that we started doing with, we started with one product line and then it went into other things. For instance, like Cliff talked about we're in hospitals with nurse call, but we're also in schools in the form of threat management. And okay. those old, you know, the old bell systems that used to be analog are now on the school's networks. So it's the same thing that applies in the threat management space. These these threat managers, you know, with active shooter buttons and, and things like that are now on the school's networks. So some of the same things applied. Yeah. And 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 those guys in the field, we knew that it was going to be a hit because, you know, again, we had that that field tech uh, uh, experience. Yeah. So we just couldn't wait to get it in their hands. And we knew exactly the response that was going to be. What we did not know is how it was going to explode the way it did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And especially with the feedback. And maybe Cliff, and you guys speak to that. So you, when you talked earlier, you said there was a feedback loop that you all provided that allowed them to push information back to you or what was working, what wasn't working, what to start, what to stop. Like, did it explode from there? Or is it just, it, and that showed you more opportunities where people were willing to use the new app and the new technology? You nailed it. Um, so I'm gonna go back one step. When something breaks at your house or in your personal life, you go on YouTube and you look it up and you usually, there's probably 10 videos and you can figure out. But in our world, everything's proprietary so yeah. these techs can't just go to youtube and be like how do i fix the tube, the tube yeah. system it's can't. it's all <laughs> right so but they're out in the field in front of a customer so it's like how can we give them the same experience they have in, on youtube inside the app how can we have the techs actually record troubleshooting tips and things from from their perspective in the app and share it with other techs and then keep it all in house. Yeah. So that's when it started off one little product line, and they're like, "Well, hey, can you add? We had we had the uh, suggestion box, and they could go in there and say, can you add this part?' Or they could submit a tip on how to fix something, or we basically put a thing in there where we could actually either build it, or they could post a tip that they could share with other technicians. Yeah. So. That's that's when the crowdsourcing the knowledge base. Yeah. Let the technicians build the app. Yes. And, and Let it the wouldn't app be, be built yeah. from the problem yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be something that they would submit and have to wait a week or two to get it. Cliff would almost have that response like within a day or two, and, and they would let him. He would let them know, hey, you know that suggestion you made. We, awesome. it, it's done. We yeah. Added Go it. check it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and can so, you test it for me? I just added it last night. 
they go yeah. in there. And that turnaround time is important, right? right. It's like striking when the iron's hot right. because that keeps the feedback coming, mm -hmm. right? Because we would have these, you know, you have like QA reports, right? Mm -hmm. We have QAR. So you turn in your quality assurance report, you think you've identified a problem with the with the software, with the hardware, with supply chain problem, and then you don't hear about it for three months. Yeah. Right. And then what we noticed is that we would have this uptick in QARs, but then mm. depending on the resolution, they would all start to take to taper down so you you know because we had objectives like i need you to submit at least five a quarter or whatever and people would start out strong and then we're like why are people stopping and then what we realized was they're submitting them but there's no response yeah. so they stopped submitting them so it's like i'm not going to keep adding like you haven't responded to my last five so i think the fact that like even you like you know cliff not being a programmer or whatever being able to turn it around um and getting that quick response yeah. um to your point i think is really really important because it, it encourages people to do something else so even next time if you're like Hey, I can't really do that. They it won't be disheartening because like, hey, you fixed the other one, so let me try to find something else, and then they keep bringing it to the table as well. Sorry, I would love to uh, dig in more uh, into like building uh, your own software using notebook platforms and apps, okay. and what are all the different use cases. So, if you guys, I would love for for us to maybe do a deep dive session okay. on all the use cases. Uh, but if we were to wrap this up by Giving a recommendation when you're thinking about building your own software uh, with a local platform, like what should you be considering if you're looking to experimenting with a couple of platforms? Like how did you come to the conclusion that maybe Glide, right? For you, it seems to be the total platform to build these solutions. So what made you decide on Glide versus everything else that's out there in the market? Because we know that it's, it's, a, it's a quite competitive uh, ecosystem. I will, I will say that, um, when Cliff actually, he initiated the glide part. And the when he would actually go in and create things in glide, I could literally come in and understand what he did without him ever having to explain it to me. That was huge. And likewise, I could create something and he would know exactly what I did. So it was almost like a meeting place of someone who could not code to someone who could and the it, it being very intuitive on creating something, right? And and I wasn't accustomed to, 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 to coding or building in that nature. And so that was that was that was very huge. So from a uh, a lot of companies in our industry have not hired coders or or mm. programmers. Yeah, that's and so like, yeah. it being very attractive of it because of its simplicity is 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 one of the key things that I that I loved about it was the fact that it did not require someone with a coding background what it required is someone who understood the need yeah what do you what what are you focusing on what's that one thing you want to do right now and how can you do it in almost sort of like a drag and drop atmosphere you know and it'd be very intuitive to the tech and um and and, and again like it gives them that opportunity to give you feedback oh yeah and I, yeah but yeah same same thing i mean i've been doing marketing and I'm a Photoshop. I'm an Adobe guy. Anything yeah. Adobe, Canva. Graphic. But you're a graphic I'm, guy. I'm a you're graphic an illustration guy. guy. Yeah. I'm a graphic guy. I'm a fonts guy. I'm a, I'm a flow graphic. charts, infographics. You yes, got it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, I know where the data is at. I just need to get to it. I just need Brian to connect me to whatever data I need to get to so that I can get it over into this app and then massage it in, in the right flow that I, that I want the user to interact with. Yeah. So um, that's if there's data somewhere, this guy right here can get to it. <laughs> I um, love it. Or build a connector or build an interface. So once you have those two pieces, why just allow, allows you to basically connect the dots. Yeah. So yeah. I love it. To, to, to maybe uh, just thinking out loud here at uh, some sort of a workshop we can do together, like just hey, here's different use cases you can uh, back with a local platform. Uh, there's this app and here's an example of there's this app and here's how uh, you guys be uh, I'm, I'm putting you uh, uh, on the hot seat here uh oh absolutely yeah, yeah so yeah yeah I, it, I hate to say it's like lace potato chips yeah once you build one app you're gonna you know, keep building them. You're, you're gonna figure something at your house it could be uh, a christmas planner yeah uh, or a, a something that you do a vacation planner and you're all of a sudden you've got an app built for your family yeah it's, it's almost it's this is gonna sound crazy but let's just say you're a guy that loves to build things right 
and 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 you want to build you, you want to build your daughter a treehouse, right? And and all you have is a hammer, yeah, and some nails. Now and, and a hand saw, and you go out and start building your daughter the treehouse, and someone walks up and says, "Hey, here's an electric saw, and here's a nickel gun." All of a sudden, you're building stuff for your wife, your <laughs> uncle, your cousin, because you have found an efficient way to build things that people need and you become the you become a genius in that in that space yeah because you have the right and to your point you have the right tools right right so it's like it's not like i can't understand what a treehouse looks like right right like and this is the this is the the death of pinterest right because like right. if i give you a picture be like i understand the picture i understand how those pieces go together but i'm also not going to rent twelve hundred dollars worth of equipment right. so i can build it so it's right. like you're saying with the platform it's like it gives you the tools there and like it's almost like you're in the workshop here are right. the resources can you put it together and it's like yes if i got all like it's like yes. legos right like I, like i can't build a house but give me some legos because building a house i gotta cut the wood i gotta nail the wood but if you give me something that i can connect together it's easy for me to build it right right and so and i think that's a good way to like look at the tools because and you both have said it like you started the problem so like here's the problem and so i know how to get there and like, if you give me the pieces, if you give me the things that I can connect together to get back to the data, like I can build that solution. And on the other side of that, it's awesome because what you wind up with is an app right. where when you when you come across that problem, now the technician has a solution in their hand. Yeah. Just okay. How many hours have you spent working on an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet? And you you're in there put formulas in, <laughs> and you've got eight hours, two days in a spreadsheet, and you've got the data. Well. All that stuff you worked on, it's already there. Now you just have to connect that spreadsheet to an app. Yeah. And now it's now it's in your pocket. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it's powerful. Look, uh, I'm really looking forward to exploring uh, the power of um, uh, you know uh, a local platform and what could it, uh, what it could enable uh, for service organizations, especially that you can build and iterate fast mm -hmm. uh, without relying on a lot of uh, technical. Uh, uh, so, uh, Brian and Cliff, thank you so much for absolutely coming uh, on, absolutely. on the show. Uh, on your twentieth anniversary. Yeah. I don't have my hat. Yeah. I don't know where. I don't know where Brian got the hat from. I must. Have, I missed oh, that. Oh, it's, it's at the Glide booth. Go All right, I'm going yeah. to Glide to get my twentieth, and I've been here like ten of the last twenty years. Wow. So I should get a, should get a hat. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, uh, folks, for tuning in. Uh, uh, Brian and Flip, uh, how would folks uh, get to hear uh, more from you or follow you? Or are you on any social platforms where people can get to know more about what you do? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. All right. Yeah. There you go. So I'll, I'll tag them in the post. And then, yeah, we'll uh, look forward to another section where we can actually do a deep use case of that. Like visualize it, as you say, right? Put it in, in pictures in terms of what kind of transformation and a local platform enabled for service organizations. Yeah, and you can even talk about the AI aspect of it. Yeah, without, without background, without background music. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right, folks. We're not picking the play, just so everybody knows. It's not Rohan picking the music. This is it uh, with Brian and Cliff, and uh, stay tuned uh, for uh, an upcoming uh, live with another, uh, uh, with uh, more service leaders uh, here at the event, the uh, Bonk Trainings uh, Fuel Service USA. I'll see you in a little Thank bit. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.